Hey guys, Mish here, and today I wanted to talk to you about toxins. Dun dun dun. So I feel like the word toxins is pretty controversial from what I've seen because there seems to be a group of people who thinks that most of our problems are caused by toxins and that detoxes are really what we need for health. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have people who think that toxins are pretty much just a myth or are at least irrelevant because our liver can filter all of them out of our body because science. And I wanted to research weight loss specifically when it comes to toxins because I know a lot of you are interested in that. And also because I've noticed this weird thing over the years where whenever I've lost some weight recently, just by like naturally how my body fluctuates a few pounds here and there, I often get breakouts and bad digestion and just like weird random symptoms. And importantly, these aren't just things that happen during weight loss but instead seem to persist as long as I'm at that lower weight. Or like for a while at least. So in addition to people interested in toxins, this video is for people who have lost weight and notice they get weird symptoms during or after it or are thinking about losing weight. And so in this video, first I'm going to briefly go over some studies on toxins and weight loss and what might be going on there and all the havoc they may be wreaking on our body. And most importantly, I'm going to give you some science-based tips on how you might be able to prevent some of these bad things from happening. So for the first study I found on this topic, the researchers looked at how losing weight affects the levels of pesticides in your blood. So things like PCBs, organochlorines, and just generally things that we have created in order to kill other things like pests of various kinds pests. And so I'm going to go over more specifically later what these kinds of things do to us, but it's well known that you do not want pesticides in your body. And one study put a group of 39 participants who were obese on a 15-week low-calorie diet and looked at what happened to their blood levels of different pesticides and toxins over the course of this weight loss. And they found that over these 15 weeks, 15 different toxins that they looked for in the blood increased from when they started losing weight to the end of those 15 weeks. And more importantly, they found that five of these were significantly higher in the obese group at the end of the 15 weeks than a control group who did not lose weight. So this is pretty clear evidence that losing weight is actually releasing toxins into your bloodstream. And I'm going to go over more of how this might happen later, but the general idea is throughout your life you've accumulated a bunch of pesticides in your body. And then when you lose weight, you're actually releasing the fat that's holding onto those pesticides into your bloodstream. And so then you just have a bunch of free pesticides just hanging out in your body after they're released by weight loss. Another really good study on it took 27 participants, about half of whom were morbidly obese, the other half of whom were obese. And these participants either were on a low calorie diet or had bariatric surgery, which is where you make the stomach smaller. But these two conditions weren't significant for this study, those were just the ways that they lost weight. And this study looked one step further than the last one because not only did they find that losing weight increased the levels of these toxins in the blood, but they actually found a really strong association between the levels of the different pesticides and how much weight they lost. So the more BMI points you lost or the higher percentage of your weight you lost, the higher your pesticide levels in your blood. So there's a clear relationship there. It's really losing weight is really leading to massive increase in your blood levels of pesticides. And just for an idea of how incredibly large this effect is, they found that losing 46% of your weight on average was associated with about a 400% increase in the levels of pesticides in the blood. This is a gigantic effect. So that's a four times increase in the level of pesticides in your blood from losing weight. And interestingly, there is something like an exponential relationship where as you lose more and more weight, the effects get stronger and stronger. Like if you've lost 100 pounds already, then losing an extra 10 is gonna make a huge difference in your blood levels than if you were just lose 10 pounds from your current weight. So if you lose a lot of weight and then keep losing weight, it gets much more toxins in your blood than if you just lose a little bit of weight in the first place. Usually these kinds of relationships are the opposite where the effects are gonna be biggest at the beginning and then it kind of levels off, but instead the effects just keep getting stronger and stronger as you continue to lose weight. And unfortunately this 400% increase was actually found after three years. So losing that weight over the course of three years, it slowed down at the end, but still there was a ton of pesticides in the blood even after years. So this is pretty clear evidence that the liver, in fact, is not really helping out with these toxins enough to actually clear them from your blood. So obviously the liver is great, does a lot of great stuff, it does filter your blood from things, but things like heavy metals and these kinds of pesticides are very, very difficult for your body to deal with and the liver can't deal with everything. 
So that's kind of doom and gloom news for weight loss, but I have some potential solutions for you, so keep watching. Don't give up on weight loss. There is hope. And some of you might be wondering, who cares? There's pesticides everywhere. What does it matter if there are a few more toxins in your bloodstream now? Well, these pesticides that lead to these toxins in your bloodstream were designed to kill. So they were made to mess with the biological systems in a bunch of different organisms. And we know that they're really killing off a lot of wildlife and they were made to kill off even mammals in some cases. So we don't know every single thing they can do in the body yet, but there's a lot of research showing that they can really mess up a lot of stuff in your body. So just for a list of some of the things, they can cause cancer, especially prostate, breast, lung, and stomach cancer, and a bunch of other cancers as well because these toxins are carcinogenic. The worst news for cancer is not only are they carcinogenic, so not only do they potentially cause your body to create tumors, but they actually get in the way of your body's ability to fight those tumors. So it's sort of a one-two punch where it's causing cancer and it's getting in the way of your antioxidant scavenging. So it messes with the system that could potentially stop cancer in its tracks in your body. These pesticides have also been implicated in high blood pressure, cardiovascular disorders, Parkinson's disease. It's also been implicated in type 2 diabetes, ADHD, hypo and hyperthyroidism. There's also a lot of evidence that these types of pesticides like PCBs and organochlorines, which are the very same things released by weight loss, that they can mess with your hormones in both women and men. So if you're a woman, you might see endometriosis, hormonal acne, irregular cycles. And for men, you might have problems with testosterone. And both men and women might have infertility. And sadly, there's a lot of evidence that these things can be passed down to your kids. If you are pregnant and have a lot of pesticides in your bloodstream, these can cause your fetus to have all these issues I've listed, plus things like autism. People are thinking might be caused by pesticides in part. There's also evidence that pesticides are toxic to your brain, like killing off your brain cells, which is not good, and messing up your nervous system. These pesticides are also toxic to your immune system. That can cause all sorts of havoc, but just for a short list, it can cause things like bad digestion, skin problems like eczema or acne, mental fog, so a hard time thinking and paying attention, fatigue, headaches, joint pain, muscle pain, irritability, bad mood, the list goes on. Inflammation can really mess up your body. So that's a non-exhaustive list, so there's more, but I don't want to bore you. But the point is, these pesticides are really not good for you. Just about any system in the body you can name, they can mess it up. You might be thinking, well, I don't get any weird symptoms. When I lose weight, I feel fine, I'm healthy. Clearly I'm fine on the pesticides. And maybe that's true, but it's very unlikely that you don't have pesticides in your system. So even if you don't feel anything now, it's very possible that they could lead to problems down the road. Like let's say you'd like to live long enough to know your grandkids. It might be very important that you reduce your pesticide intake now so that you are less likely to get cancer later. I know this video has been pretty depressing so far, but now I'm going to get to how we get the toxins in our bloodstream in the first place and how we might be able to prevent that and actually get rid of them. So there is light at the end of this very sad pesticide tunnel. How they work is they tend to accumulate as you go up higher in the food chain. This is pretty well established fact. So this is no longer like there's evidence for, this is like, we know this very well from the whole D DDT nightmare. So just as an example, let's say there are some pesticides in the soil just from being used for many years. Every plant that grows, I'm just gonna use these numbers just to help illustrate it. Let's say a plant grows and gets five units of pesticides in it throughout its life. Each plant's gonna have about five pesticide units. Then let's say a cow comes by and eats a bunch of plants. Let's say a cow eats a thousand plants, just a random number, in its lifespan. That cow has now accumulated five units of pesticides for each plant it ate. So now that cow is full of 5,000 pesticide units. So let's say a carnivore comes by and eats about 20 cows a year. Every time the carnivore eats one of those cows, they're getting all the pesticides that that cow ate that have accumulated in that cow's body. And so if you eat 20 cows a year, then you're getting 5,000 pesticide units per cow and you end up with 100,000 pesticide units a year just from the cows. And you're also eating a bunch of other stuff, of course. So the higher up you get in the food chain, the more it accumulates because our bodies are not good at getting rid of these pesticides. Generally, once they're in, most of them stick around. If you're a carnivore and you're eating things high on the food chain, then you're already eating concentrated pesticide cows, for example. And then you just become completely packed with pesticides. And where do all those pesticides go? Your fat. So pesticides are really lipophilic, which means they really stick well in fat. So every time you eat pesticides, it goes to your bloodstream, it kinda goes and finds somewhere to hang out and stick, and it goes for your fat. And so that's why when you lose weight and burn that fat, those pesticides are now just released into your body. 
and hang out in your bloodstream. And I imagine there's only so much you can store in your fat, so that's probably an argument for maintaining a lower weight to help prevent that in part. And so where are you getting all of those pesticides? I would like to let the authors of a great study on this slash review say, as I quote, fatty foods such as meat, fish, poultry, and dairy products serve as main causes of pesticide accumulation. Yeah. So that brings us to how do you avoid stuffing yourself full of pesticides and getting these bad effects from weight loss? And so first and most importantly is preventing getting the pesticides in the first place and not adding more to your system. So if you're losing weight and you have even more pesticides than usual in your blood, it's really important that you don't keep adding more. And even if you're not losing weight, you always do have some pesticides in your blood too. So I think it's a good idea for everyone to try not to put more pesticides into them and get cancer and all this bad stuff. And so the first and most important thing is to eat lower on the food chain. That's a pretty established fact. Even if I weren't a vegan, my number one piece of advice would be to not eat animals. So not to eat these foods that are clearly identified as just chock full of pesticides. So not eating meat, dairy, poultry, and fish essentially. It's going to be the number one thing you can do to reduce the pesticide load on your body and to reduce the toxins in your bloodstream. And in particular, I feel like the best diet to do if you want to completely stuff yourself with pesticides is keto because not only are they eating a lot of meat, but they're eating a lot of fat and like fatty meat. And we know pesticides love fat and they're really concentrated in the fat of animals especially. So if you're keto and adding butter to everything and eating the fatty parts of meat, then you're just like really, really, really filling yourself up with pesticides. And that just seems like a disaster for your long-term health. So my number one tip is don't be keto. And alongside that, be vegan. And in particular, meat and fish are the really, really bad culprits. So if you're gonna do anything to help with your pesticide load, reduce your meat and fish intake. And I know people think fish is really healthy because it has omega-3s, but there are a lot of other sources of omega-3s. For example, some algaes actually have the same kind of omega-3s as fish do, which is the easy to convert kind. And there's flaxseed and hemp seed and walnuts, and there's just a lot of good sources of omega-3 out there that are not completely packed with pesticides and heavy metals because they really accumulate in fish because fish are fatty and that's where they have their omega-3s, but they're absorbing all these pesticides from the ocean. And my second tip, which may seem obvious, but I actually didn't start doing this till recently, is eat organic produce. So this won't make nearly as big a difference as not eating animals. I think this is the next best thing you can do in addition to eating lower on the food chain. And organic produce does not have pesticides directly sprayed on them, so that's gonna be a good way to reduce your intake because most vegetables have a lot of pesticides on them. Eat organic, not only produce, but actually anything you can, if you can afford it. I know it's expensive, but eating plants instead of animals, like in tip number one, is actually gonna be much cheaper because things like rice and beans and potatoes and all the staples of a vegan diet are way, way cheaper than meat and dairy and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully you can use some of that saved money from eating less meat to spend it on some organic produce because that's gonna help you too. And tip three, this one's more speculation. So the first two were like clearly science backed. Like it's very hard to argue with those first two, but this third one is sort of my own extrapolation from the studies. So given that pesticides occur in fats more frequently, it might make sense to eat a higher carb diet or reduce your fat intake even if you're already vegan to try to reduce the potential sources of pesticides. So I haven't seen many studies on whether things like oils and whatnot contain pesticides, but if you want to be on the safe side then reducing your fat intake might help even if it's from plants. And for tip number four, there's actually one study I found on this one that was pretty interesting. It found that pesticides actually get sweated out so I used to think saunas were silly, A, because I don't like them. Right now it already feels like a sauna in here and I am not, not a huge fan. I hadn't seen much evidence for saunas being very useful for things like this, but the study suggests that sweating, whether it's through exercise or maybe saunas, might actually help excrete the pesticides in your body. And number five is more of a related point. There's some evidence that eating fiber can actually bind to heavy metals in your gut and help remove them from your body. And I imagine there's a good chance that studies will find that fiber can do a similar thing for pesticides. And plus eating fiber is great for you anyway, reduces the risk of a lot of cancers. So there's already a risk of stomach cancer from pesticides. You could reduce that and potentially actually remove pesticides from your body by eating more fiber. And another tip for those of you who are specifically interested in the weight loss part of this is to lose weight slowly. So at a moderate pace, because if you lose a lot of weight really quickly, you're gonna really overload your body with those pesticides. But if you do it more slowly, you're gonna give your body a chance to clear some of those out of your body if you're like sweating, for example, 
and just adapt to the levels. Don't crash diet. I have a ton of other videos on how to lose weight in a healthy way that does not require restricting or feeling guilty or cutting your calories, anything like that. So go check out those if you're interested. And I'd like to add the effects of being at an unhealthy weight are much worse and much more pressing and much more immediate right now than the bad effects of pesticides. So things like obesity are the most immediate things that could actually kill you now, whereas the pesticides are more likely to be sort of long-term. So don't let this scare you off from losing weight. It's definitely a good idea to get yourself to a healthy weight so that you can live longer in the first place and then reduce your pesticide so that you can live even longer. I'm sure many of you are wondering about detoxes. I don't think there are studies examining if detoxes through various means, whether it's juices or anything like that, can help. But the more I learn about science, the more degrees I get, the closer I get to my PhD, the more open-minded I've become. Because people think that science knows a lot more than it really does. Just because there isn't evidence for something yet doesn't mean that it can't be true. Because sometimes we just don't know stuff because there's no funding to do it. We get our money from the government to do science and to do studies. And if the government doesn't want to pay for a topic, then it doesn't really get researched. So. If you feel like detoxes help you and make you feel better and you're not doing any dangerous ones, then go for it. Maybe science will show that you're right. I know this video involved a lot of facts just coming at you real fast, but thank you for sticking it through. And I really, really hope this can help those of you who have noticed weird symptoms with losing weight or are looking to lose weight and want to make sure you're doing it in a healthy way or are just interested in being healthier and reducing your pesticides generally. Please comment below if you have any questions on this or you want some more follow-up information. And I'd love to hear about your experiences with weight loss, if you've had any weird sorts of symptoms that sound like they could be related to this. And if you liked the video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up or a subscribe or a share. And if you're interested in supporting me in making more videos, check out my Patreon. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.